Hey, welcome back to What's Wrong With This Picture. We're talking about low light with uh, Dennis Guillaume and getting away with low light on when you need to shoot pictures around the campfire in low a lot of times we find that a lot of the a lot of the fun stuff uh that we that we do uh when camping uh a lot of them a lot of the closer times the more personal kinds of uh, memories that we can create when we're camping are around the campfire or outside where there is low light and it's in the evening very often that's the time when a lot of the stories get told and the fun gets uh, the fun gets recounted and and those are great picture time taking times right but the lights not quite right well and it, it's that last half hour after sunset it's mm -hmm. a just before sunrise and and uh, uh, yeah it creates uh, some issues and as a matter of fact uh, we oftentimes don't recognize till we try to take a picture that we're actually in a low light situation because we're uh, as uh, our eyes adapt uh, to light yes. uh, to a wide range of, of light. As human beings, we're, we're more advanced than our we're cameras. Pretty, yeah, we're pretty good. There you go. Uh, and so uh, until you actually try to take a picture and meter that picture in your camera to try to find out, you know, where do I have to set this in mm -hmm. order to get the picture. Uh, you don't realize, wow, I'm in low light. Right. And uh, so one of the things, though, that we were talking about earlier, uh, the, the most common adjustment for low light is to ad adjust the ISO setting. Right, which is and the, uh, the, the old film speed, but now it's the sensor speed. Right. And so we were saying uh, earlier on that uh, uh, you may just have to push that up. Now, of course, the... Uh, the uh, best choice, if at all possible, is to keep the ISO setting as low as you can. Right. Because that gives you less of the problems that come from cranking that uh, sensitivity up. Right. And so, uh, if you can, as close to 100 for, for most cameras is going to give you the best quality picture. Sure. Uh, at the same time, the range is, be, has become astounding to me. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you can now set uh, uh, cameras that aren't all that expensive at ISOs that range from 50 and in some cases go all the way up to 25,600. <laughs> and uh, which I don't think film ever got to. No, <laughs> no, film 800 and 1600 was pretty fast stuff. That's you know, right. 3200 was uh, you know you had, to do some, you had to do some fancy chemistry there to in developing to make that happen. Well, the the whole thing is now uh, 25,600 yeah. is pretty quick, but you pay the price in quality mm -hmm. because I haven't seen a camera yet that uh, will take that high an ISO and not require some considerable uh, cleaning up in, okay. in software. So still, take it with a grain of salt, but still yeah. the range is pretty high. Yeah, and if you need yeah. to get that picture and that's all the light you got, you can get it. Yeah. Uh, you always use the then the lowest setting uh, that you can, mm -hmm. uh, and I, uh, 100 I think is is of course I mm -hmm. ideal. Uh, always uh, uh, know what your camera's capabilities are. Mm -hmm. When uh, you know I don't know if you read those reviews in those uh, magazines, those old magazines right, I was yeah, talking right, about, yeah. uh, but uh, oftentimes uh, the acceptable range is going to be very different depending a lot of times on how much you paid for the camera sure. because the most expensive sensors and the the best quality images are going to come usually from those those cameras that are a little more expensive gotcha and so uh, uh, know what your camera is able to do mm -hmm. if your camera you didn't pay a lot of money for your camera chances are the acceptable range of ISO is going to be not nearly as high as something that was engineered to mm -hmm. uh, use a better sensor gotcha. and so uh, know if uh, 800 is your limit then you know that anything beyond that if you can even set beyond that uh, is going to compromise the quality of, of the picture right. in terms of noise. Right. Now, the manufacturer is probably going to tell you that it's, oh, yeah, it'll go way the heck up there, right? Well, it, they'll tell you, a lot of times they'll tell but you that, but if you look at uh, the like real... Test results and things like yeah, that. Test yeah, test results will tell you. Uh, and most of the uh, the reviewers, you can find them on the Internet, right. uh, reviews of almost any model you can imagine, mm -hmm. and uh, they will pretty accurately tell you what's acceptable and what's not in terms sure. of how high you can go. Sure. Uh, no, uh, if 
if you have to use very high settings, uh, then that's where you start getting into using noise reduction software. Mm -hmm. And there's all kinds of it out there. Uh, one that I use is uh, ImageNomics uh, Noiseware Professional. Okay. And uh, I like it. In, that's a plug into Photoshop? It actually comes both ways. When you, okay. when you buy it, you get a plug in that you can plug into Photoshop so you don't have to leave Photoshop to use it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also has a uh, standalone feature so that you could, uh, you could start it up by itself without mm -hmm. Photoshop or Photoshop Elements or the Lightroom or any of those other uh, so well known So you can things. use it in conjunction with less expensive software than Absolutely, Photoshop. yeah. And if you and for that matter, by itself. Right. Oh, uh, okay. And to give you some idea, when we say that, that low light is something we don't always recognize, uh, look at this next picture. Uh, this is a picture that uh, was taken at a concert, uh, and it was a, what I thought was a well-lit, room it was a small uh, chamber orchestra concert sure and uh, uh in a well-lit room but the light was tungsten light mm -hmm. and uh i had to crank way up to twelve thousand whatever it was five or twelve thousand eight hundred or mm -hmm. whatever that it, what that speed is uh in order to be able to operate with enough shutter speed to stop small actions gotcha so here's a, p a picture of my granddaughter at that particular uh, concert and if if you blow up just the part of her face you see what happened there's a lot of noise in there all that grainy spotted stuff mm -hmm. is the noise that came from my using such a high iso level mm -hmm. now it's not the kiss of death but it, it means that uh, if I blow that picture up very much, I'm going to start seeing that stuff right away. And in fact, sure. that's so bad that I'll probably see it even in a 5x7 or an 8x10. Okay. So as I look at that, I decided I've got to go to my software. I've got to uh, apply some uh, noise reduction. And look how orange that is. That's, mm -hmm. that's because I didn't uh, choose to change the white balance to a tungsten white balance on gotcha. my camera which you most cameras today have the ability to mm -hmm. adjust that the color balance right uh, i knew that i was shooting in raw uh, format so what i what i knew that i was going to do is put it in the uh in my software anyway and i could make that color adjustment uh, right. by changing the temperature setting but it might have saved you a step if you'd changed it in the camera right? yeah it, it and, could and really all um, i mean even the even inexpensive point and shoot type cameras have different settings you can set like i i, I have a point and shoot that says it has an auto setting for right. for the white balance right but if you want to be sure then you can set it for sunlight overcast or uh, fluorescent or fluorescent or, uh, tungsten yeah. you yeah. know yeah. all yeah. those different kinds yeah. of of lighting situations and then then your pictures come out a little bit better the first time and you have right. to do less you, manipulation you may only then want to tweak them a little bit yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but uh yeah in, in any case that's another fe thing that happens when you're taking in light that is uh, not necessarily optimum for uh, the situation. Okay, uh, so what does image nomics do to your photo of your uh, of this little girl? All right, let's go to the next picture. There she is now, and uh, if you remember the one from before, it's not nearly as orange. It's mm -hmm. more. It's a little more natural. Got natural skin uh, tone. I uh, there. cooled off the uh, the uh, temperature setting on in uh, in camera raw in this case. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit more comfortable to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you blow that one up. Uh, you see that all that spotty stuff is pretty much gone. Right. It's been yeah. Now it's you can still see it, but it's less so. Now yep. let me ask you this about the image. This the 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 noise reduction software. What does that do? Does that actually blur the picture slightly, or does it actually blend? How, how does that work? Well, it's a a blending process that uses algorithms, and now we're getting algorithms. yeah. Now we're getting I got into a bucket load of algorithms yeah. I can sell you. Yeah. Uh, and that's all I'm going to tell you about that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it uses some mathematical, mathematical uh, uh, formulas. formulas that uh, allows it to, in some cases, yes, okay. it does blur. It, as yeah. a matter of fact, it cre uses a blurring technique uh, to uh, uh, help to smooth over those mm -hmm. those spots. Uh, and uh, then with color uh, uh, noise, like we had in that mm -hmm. first picture that I showed you, uh, in that case, there is also an adjustment. So you're going to adjust lu uh, luminescence in, in terms of right. uh, getting the, the spots to blend themselves. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you're probably going to have to adjust some color uh, uh, noise uh, uh, th things as far as if you if you're actually looking at uh, color uh, noise itself, yes. which we had in that first picture, and so th that too uh, can be adjusted out, if mm -hmm. you will. Okay. Uh, so I, th this was just an example of what happens when. Uh, 
uh, uh, you've got that noise situation going. You know you're in a situation you're going to have to shoot at higher ISOs than right. you would like to. Right, because you can't use a flash in that particular yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah, that would have been terribly disruptive. Right. You know, in the middle of a concert, you're not mm -hmm. going to do that. So uh, as a result, uh, you take what you got and you uh, use your equipment to the best that you can in order, knowing that uh, it's going to take me a little time afterwards to make some adjustments, but I still have a very good opportunity to get uh, an excellent shot mm -hmm. uh, uh, out of that situation. Good. Okay. Well, the f the uh, uh, the other well, most most cameras don't allow the adjustment of IS, or some cameras don't allow adjustment other than just simple things. Uh, simple sliders and things like that. In that particular case, uh, it's simply a matter of getting used to you, what your equipment will and won't do, isn't it? Well, yes, and it's it's also true that uh, cameras uh, oftentimes won't. Uh, if you're sh if you're in the habit of shooting in automatic mode, for example, mm -hmm. right? Uh, automatic modes are just what they say they are. They take over the adjustments of the camera and. Uh, th through uh, the programming that's built into the camera, they decide how to use the available light. They, uh, they decide how fast the shutter speed will be, how, how open the uh, aperture will, uh, has to be in order for it to get a decent picture. And as a result, it also will uh, decide what ISO is necessary in order to get that picture to, to come out uh, looking okay. pretty good. Okay. So if you're using automatic settings, you probably don't have any ISO discretion. Okay. Gotcha, yeah. But if you will turn to manual or aperture priority or shutter priority, uh, and in some cases program mode, mm -hmm. uh, you will still be able to select the ISO that uh, right. you want to use. Yeah, and even even lower end point and shoots have some of that capability yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to be right back. We're going to look a little bit more at this issue of low light and how to deal with it when we come back on the next segment of what's wrong with this picture. Have a question or a comment for Dennis Guillaume? Get in touch at picture at rvnn.tv and don't forget to send us your RVing pictures for possible use on an upcoming episode. You can also leave a voicemail for Dennis at 877-578-RVNN, extension 704. Follow RV NewsNet on Facebook and Twitter and you can receive text messages to alert you when we're streaming live by texting RVNN to 72727. That way you can join us live in the chat room, ask questions, and become part of the RV NewsNet family. Remember, any photos or other material submitted to us become the property of RV News Net and cannot be returned. Today's show is brought to you by Angie's List, where you'll find thousands of unbiased reports and reviews about service companies in your area. Whether you're looking for a roofer, plumber, house cleaner, dentist, or even a doctor, Angie's List members share their experiences with each other so that you can choose the service company that's right for your job. Companies can't pay to be on Angie's List, and the reviews come from people just like you who have had experience with the companies mentioned. To find out more, go to rvnn.tv and click on the Angie's List ad. 